Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Modicon M221. I'm your host Leandro Humada and in this video we're going to talk about the communication blocks that we have in the EcoStructure Machine Expert Basic so we can use them to communicate with different devices over Ethernet. So let's go to the presentation. In this video we're going to base the program of the communication blocks that we have used for the Modbus serial. We're going to make some changes and then we're going to use it for the Modbus TCP. So let's continue with the presentation. Basically the idea for this video is to communicate the Modicon M221 with another device. In our case we're going to use the Modicon M172. We are going to communicate via Modbus TCP. The M221 will going to be the client okay, and the M172 will be the server. These are the parameters okay, that we're going to set. This one is going to is already set on the M172 and this one I'm going to show you how to set this up on the M221 software. So from the other PLC this is exactly the same as we have done with the Modbus serial but instead of Modbus serial we're going to use Modbus TCP. So here we're going to read the analog inputs and then we're going to write into the backlight of the M172. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is to program the mm, the Ethernet port in the M17 in the M1 the Modicon M221. Okay, so for that we just need to go to configurations, select the Ethernet port, and then change the IP address. Okay. The other thing that we need to do is to check that the IP address that we have selected is in the same range of the M M172. Otherwise, if they are not in the same range, the communication is not going to be possible. And if if you put the same IP address for both devices, then we're going to have a problem because we don't. Um, it's not possible to have duplicate IP address on the same network. So be careful on that one. So let's continue with this. Just change the view. Okay, so. Here we have uh, something different compared with the communication blocks in the Modbus serial. Okay, in the Modbus TCP, what we need to do is to add, we need to create a table. Okay, and in that table, we need to specify an index for each device that is going to be linked to the function block that we're going to use. Okay, so if we go back to the application that we have done in the past, okay. This is the application that we have done for the Modbus serial. So as you can see here, you will need to define the PLC as a master in the communication. Okay, so you can see here all the parameters of the Modbus. And here uh, you can see that the device, the PLC M221 is the master in the communication that we have used before in order to connect with the same PLC with the M172. So if we go to programming, and we see here the function blocks that we can use for read and write, okay? In order to just, if you don't see the other video, in order to add these function blocks, we just need to go to here, okay? Right click over the function block that you want and put it on the rank that you have, okay? And then you have some configuration. They're going to display that later. So as you can see here, the ID in the Modbus serial is the slave address that you have in the in the architecture but here the Modbus TCP is a little bit different you will need to create a table and in the table you have this index in order to collect in order to link the function blocks the communication with the table that you have for the Modbus TCP so let me just show you here Modbus TCP okay we just need to put the IP address of this uh, M172 to device. I'm going to use generic because there is another way. This stuff is for the TCP IP. Uh, IO scanner, they're going to talk about later. So add this device. Here you can specify PLC underscore M172. Okay. So you can see here there's no address and nothing at all. And here in the index is the index number one, which will be linked to the 
okay yes da, 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 to this id over here and the other thing that we need to change on the function blocks is the link there is no longer the serial line what we need to do is to select the ethernet port okay and that is what we need to do in all the other ones change the link that you are going to use so what we have done here is just reuse the same code that we have done in the previous uh, video with the modbus serial we just change that to modbus tcp as you saw which is quite easy you just define the table for the modbus uh, tcp devices that we're going to have and then each device will have a uh, index and that index is the one that you need to use or link to the um, communication blocks that we have so let's continue with the presentation okay so i don't forget about anything so we have already done this part okay so this is how you can add the function blocks okay we just need to find these arrows over here in the programming tab and select the function block that you want to use read write or read and write so once you have defined that what we need to do is to select the link or the way that you want to communicate i have already shown you that by default we have the signal line one and in our case we just need to use the ethernet port one by doing this the other thing that we need to link is the id and the id is linked to the index of the devices that we have already defined in our case it will be the one and then so on if we add more devices then you just need to apply once you have configured that okay as you can see over here let me just change the view okay these are all the parameters that you can configure okay this is important data so you know the plc knows which is the device that he needs to communicate with now uh, probably I jump into here okay so the other thing that we need to do is to define how are we going to read all the type of object that we want to read and write and for that we have this table okay so depend on which function block are we going to use read write or read and write we have different modbus functions okay you can see here and the complete table is over here so if you want to read uh, for example um, a percentage nwu okay we just need to use the function tree okay read holding register okay which should be this one okay if you want to write multiples then you just go here this one okay and this one is for read and write multiples it should be serial 17 should be this one the function called 23 okay this one is in exa okay this is the function block so this was just to give you an idea of the object type okay then the other thing that we need to do is depend if you are reading the object indicate from the initial position and the quantity okay so just define the first object on the plc side okay on the other device that you want the percentage and w for example in this case this one okay just define in our case we just need to add one but we just talk about that later and then we need to specify the first option on the other side the quantity of memory words that we want to read from the other side and then where those where the data is going to be located in the m221 okay so this first two is from the other plc okay or from the other device and this one the index data will be the information where you want to locate in the m221 to read it now we have the other way we want the write okay we just need to specify where to write the information on the other side the amount of information and then where is going to take the data okay and then save it um, sending that values to the other side okay that's a little bit idea so these are the components that you need to configure in order to communicate to make the communication then 
if you have a problem during the communication, okay, each function blocks that we have seen in Modula Serial, okay, we have these two variables that indicate if we have an error. So, based on the variable, okay, this can give us more information where is our problem. So, here is a complete list, but probably for further information, I recommend you to go to the help in the Machine Expert Basic in case you have a problem. Otherwise, continue. Okay, you have more information about the code. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, but what we're going to do is to check the communication, okay, that we have already configured. So, uh, in the past, in the previous video, you can check it. Okay, I'm not going to do it again. So, we just make the configuration and we have saw that the M172 doesn't allow the multiple uh, read and write at the same time. So, this part is not going to work. Okay, we have already seen it. Okay, and in order to access into the position on the M221, we just need to subtract one. Okay, we have already explained that in the previous video and it applies the same for the Modbus TCP. Okay, so all this part is already configured, okay, for the first object and everything. Okay, and we already have created the the commands and everything over here in the function block. So we just change this. What we have done in this particular case is just change the link and that's all. So what we're going to do now is to check that we are connected with the controller. Okay, so let me just open cmd okay let's ping the device just to double check that we have connection okay this is the other plc now i'm going to ping the m221 okay it's pinging it's doing everything just fine so now i'm going to log in into the plc over ethernet <laughs> Okay, it's been run. Now we need to download this application. Okay, good. So now what we need to do is to run this and see what's going on. So, I shall show you in the past that uh, pa -pa -pa -pum, this multiple uh, read and write is not going to work. So, if we just play this, we should see an error, okay, on the other side. We just execute, delete, word, and everything. I just show you again the error, okay. You see here communication error 254 and operation 1. So, if we check in the presentation again uh, communication error to find protocol specification error if you go to one here request has not been proceeded illegal function okay this one so we have the communication error 254 okay and then the illegal function the one okay that it means that the other side doesn't accept the model function that we have already specify over here so what we need to do is to divide that in two okay so i'm going to write and read uh, this information let me just double check uh, da, da, da. communication serial line da, da, da. okay here i'm going to change the view so this is the plc and what i'm going to do is to start the sequence okay there we go. So we can start reading the sequence. As you can see here the execution. And this one, I'm reading the information. So this one is the temperature. Okay, so I'm going to touch the proof. Just to show you that it's going to be rising. Okay, you can see over there. It's rising. Okay. Which is good. Now, if we open the software, the other software, the Machine Expert HVAC. Okay, I already connected, so I'm going to read the information. You can see it matches. Okay, 
just to show you that we're reading the same information. Now, in order to activate the back light, okay, the back light, we just need to put this one in one, if I'm not wrong. Okay, and I believe do, 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 that the camera has frozen just one minute. And there we go again. So let me just put in zero. Okay, one. And you can see there is activated the backlight. Okay, so this is how you can make the communication between your PLC as a um, client, okay, and you have different servers uh, on the Modbus TCP network that you have. You can use the function blocks, okay, for read and write information. We're going to see in the next video how we can use the Modbus IO scanner that for me is much better rather than using the function blocks just to reduce the code and identify any faulty that we have the network. So um, this is it for the communication blocks that we have on the Modicon end to one. Thank you very much for watching this video and I see you on the next one.